people who bought a house. What is the weirdest thing you have found left by the previous owner? My first house purchase in 2005. Bought an old farmhouse that was built in 1923. The basement was filled with crap. We told them they needed to clean it all out before closing, but they didn't do it. The realtor asked if we wanted to postpone closing, and we decided no. Some of the stuff looked interesting enough. Maybe it will be worthwhile to go through. Most of it was just junk. Then, about halfway through, we were working our way from one end of the basement to the other, because you could barely walk through, I went to pick up what I thought was a small box, only to quickly realize it weighed at least 75 pounds. Upon further inspection, it wasn't a box, but a wooden square, 4 inches wide and about 12 x 12, with two thin masonite plywood covers on each side. On one edge were two bolts with wires coming off that had been cut, very strange, had no idea what it was, but thought it was interesting. So I put it aside and we kept going. At the very back of the basement once we cleared everything else out, was a rickety grey cabinet, built into the house. Inside, were numerous strange small tools, vials of mercury, vials of a strange powder, and thousands literally thousands, of dice blanks. Some actual dice, but mostly blanks without the dots. They were all in little boxes labeled dice blanks. Also very strange. Not too long after that, I met a guy and upon learning my address, he said can I come over? My best friend grew up in that house. He came by, and proceeded to tell me stories for an hour and a half about his childhood best friend's eccentric father, someone who was a part of the Dixieland Mafia in the 60s and 70s, and who made a living traveling around the US as a traveling gambler. The enormously heavy box was an electromagnet, and the dice blanks were for him to make his own loaded dice with a little bit of metal powder under the inlaid dot, so he could set up his own table with the, the electromagnet underneath, and turn it on when he wanted to persuade the dice. He told me many other stories, including that there was no doubt in his mind that he had killed someone. Pretty fascinating. Before I met her, my wife got a call from someone she worked with saying they'd just bought an old house and in the city, and in it was a steamer trunk with her family name, not a common one, carved into the woodwork on one end. As it turns out, it was the trunk that her great-grandfather used when he came over from Germany, and it made the trip to my wife's hometown when he met her great-grandmother on a visit, and subsequently moved to her city to marry her. We now have it and it's full of family portraits and albums. It's not really weird but I think it's kind of a nice story one of the kids rooms has a shelf going all around the top edge, and when my kid was putting stuff up there they found a letter from the previous kid. The letter welcomed them to the room etc and asked them to take special care of a rose bush in the front yard that was their special rose bush. My kid thought it was really cool to have that connection with the previous kid. Not really weird but they left a typed out and printed note about the house and how to take care of it. Detailing all the plant life in the backyard and how to prep for the winter. Described how to take care of the hot tub and gave random tidbits about the electrical. I got something similar from the previous owners of my house. 16 pages of notes about the house the renovations, the models and information on things like the generator and sprinklers, contact info for contractors they'd used, etc. It was incredibly generous. But in two years I've found too many fucked up hobbyist renovations to continue thinking of them fondly. Apparently the husband liked doing all his own work, and he didn't know shit about construction or plumbing or electrical because he was a retired dentist. I've been slowly hiring people to fix his stupid mistakes, like venting the stove exhaust into the wall, swapping polarity on electrical outlets, and installing a ridiculous amount of aqueducts. Not my house, but the school my friend worked at. A pipe had leaked and ruined a wall in the building, one of the oldest schools in the city. It was a beautiful property. Anyways the pipe leaked so they pulled down the ruined wall and behind the wall found a door. 
A fully furnished apartment was there. Had a coal burning stove to heat it, early 1900s appliances and decor. It was for the caretaker of the school. A glass bowl. It was kind of pretty, with horizontal blue stripes. We kept fruit in it. We thought about dropping it off at the local charity shop, but never got around to it. Then one day I was at an antique fair and I saw for sale glass bowls that looked almost identical to ours. I went home to get my bowl and brought it to be assessed. Turns out it was a vintage Orifas crystal bowl. The assessor valued it at around $800. We no longer keep fruit in it. My house was a foreclosure. The previous owners let their kids dump a bunch of paint in the basement and paint on the basement walls. My favorite was some crudely painted boobs with the words herp dick painted next to it. I've left it up for the entire 11 years I've been here. You don't mess with art. These a-holes I bought a house from stuck a little skeleton figurine dressed up in a little monk's robe behind the exhaust vent in the furnace closet. Just about shit myself when I opened up that door and there was this tiny skeletal hand poking out. I thought it was a ducking dead baby. $1,200 in cash above the door on the inside the closet. I found it while painting. My ex-wife found, behind a drawer in a built-in cupboard, a lovely lockbox contains several nice pocket watches and family heirlooms the great part was that with a little sleuthing, we found the son of the man who originally built that house and reunited these items to the family, it was a wonderful experience from start to finish. A diary of an American soldier in WW2, South Pacific Theater found it above a door when remodeling 20 plus years ago. My wife and I tried everything we could think of to find a descendant, but to no avail. <coughs> Lived here three years, slowly renovating it since it seemingly hadn't been touched since the 80s. Got a new kitten this year and she was trouble. Always getting places she shouldn't. She got in a closet under the stairs, and behind the piece of drywall couldn't coax her out, so I just pulled the drywall down, and found her standing on a few old boxes. Pulled them out, and it ended up being around $10,000 of silver and old coins that it seems were put there in the 90s and forgotten about. A friend bought a house that had a zigzag tunnel leading to a bomb shelter. Empty with some rust, it was otherwise just a dirty room. The only thing cool about it is was that it was built under a pond so it had a skylight to let in light. She boarded it up when she divided the house into apartments. My wife and I bought a house shortly after we were married in the early 80s. Cleaning before we moved in we found a World War II inflatable life raft with a water desalination drinking kit, rolls of green grave grass, the stuff they put around open graves in cemeteries so your feet don't get muddy, bins of beads to make rosaries, amateur paintings of Jesus that were nailed to the wall in the attic, nailed not hung, a Nazi knife, a grenade casually forgotten behind tools on a shelf in the back shed, an old broken cedar hope chest filled with the cut off bottoms of hundreds of denim jean legs, a child's potty chair, filled with old poop, hidden under a built-in bench in the dining room. These are only the things that came to mind first. As you can imagine, we got a pretty good deal on the house. It was worth the small cost of renting the dumpster, calling the police bomb squad and the hassle of selling some of the artifacts, oh. When we pulled up the carpet in the living room a few years later we discovered the floor beneath it was custom linoleum tile inlaid with geometric shapes depicting soccer players and soccer balls phone sockets everywhere. It was a two up two down house with a truly excessive number of phone sockets and some in weird places like above the kitchen door or in the attic, which was not even not finished as rooms but had no ladder and wasn't even boarded, just rafters. Why? The house had no alarm system or anything like that that might need phone sockets. There was absolutely no logical reason we could see for some of those placements. 
like the one above the kitchen door wouldn't have made any sense at all to plug into a phone or other device with what was surrounding it. Was someone making secret landline calls perched on a rafter in the attic? I also found multiple packets of corn and bunion treatments behind the kickboards in the kitchen. Not mine, and it was a rental, but when some of my high school friends went off to college in the early 90s they rented a house, and whoever lived there before hid weed all over the place. Probably about an ounce? In total but it was everywhere. Pull up the corner of the carpet. Weed. On top of the refrigerator. Weed. Back of the shelves in the hall closet. Weed. Either they were the most forgetful stoners ever or they did it as a surprise for the new residents. The acreage my wife and I moved to three years ago had a bucket full of wrapped dinosaur bones. Took them to our local museum where they confirmed they are roughly 68 million years old. Had a saw. Pretty cool. Wasn't a purchase. But I was showing a house to a couple and we couldn't believe the reported square footage. It looked like a nice 1,700 square feet house in a semi-rural community, but the square footage on the listing said about 4,500. I was sure it was a typo. Turns out most of it was basement. Think Buffalo Bill's basement that just goes on and on with random rooms. Place was vacant, lighting wasn't great, and we get to a dead end room down there and turn on the lights and there is this porcelain doll just chilling in the middle of the room. Only thing left in the house. Husband yells, F this and we all run out. We ruled out that whole neighborhood as an option, for reasons. Semi related, went to look at a house with my agent, this place says it has a nice basement that would make a great man gave. So we go down there to check it out and it's stark down there. Sure it's a basement, going to be dark, but some overhead lighting would fix that. There's one thing I am in disbelief about though, I turn to my agent and say I can't believe they would paint a basement black though? Like who goes with black walls in a basement? My agent says yeah, I was thinking the same thing, super odd I get close to the wall and check it out, but, that's not paint dot holy shit that's black mold. Black mold everywhere. So thick and widespread that it literally covered every inch of the walls. Ah, uh, this isn't paint. I say to my agent. Oh my god. We're getting the fuck out of here, now. She says to me. We basically ran out of the house, my agent called the listing agent to give them a heads up to provide proof that they would deal with the black mold immediately, like that week, or she would go through whatever procedures to have the house condemned. It was absolutely vile. Edit, for clarification. The black mold only covered the basement walls, it wasn't all over the entire house. Still bad obviously, but felt I should clarify that my parents house. A previous owner fancied himself a DIY guy we think. First week we're in the house we call an electrician to get economy 7 installed. He shuts off all the breakers, questions why the house hasn't burned down, and wonders how the hell the house passed inspection. So, two weeks into our new house they have to get the whole place rewired for a small fortune. Over the last 40 years it seems every time they renovate something new and interesting thing shows up. Recently the kitchen sink kept clogging. After a brief search we found the drain was rooted under the kitchen floor and concreted over. It had finally cracked under the weight and was leaking into the foundations. Tucked away in a crawl space under the kitchen, the previous owner placed a dummy with a horrifying Halloween mask on it. Went in to replace a pipe and had to replace my undies. A basement room that was fully decked out as a dungeon. Faux stone walls. A stocks, like where you lock your head and hands in a lee oldie England, candle scones on the walls. A metal barred cage in the corner from floor to ceiling. Oh and the closet had a load of toys, some normal, some, not so typical. We bought the house from the CEO of the company which we franchise from. It was her childhood home where her mother lived till the day she died. In true rich person fashion, 
they didn't care to clean out the house before selling it. Just told us we can do whatever we want with the old lady stuff that was there. We found a hidden box of spicy letters, from the old lady to her affair partner spanning many years. That was fun to give to the CEO.